we started production on this over 4,200 days ago. So, but I still remember it. Yeah. You know, very, very clearly. What the hell are we getting ourselves into? I mean, I had kind of the architecture of the whole piece in mind, but then every year we got this gestation period of a year to think about each segment, each year. We didn't film every year. You know, sometimes it was 18 months, sometimes it was nine months, but roughly once a year. But the, the tone of the film, I was trying to capture just the way life kind of unfolds or maybe how you remember your life or the way time works, you know, through, through our lives. So that's what I was trying to capture in a not too dramatic way. But like I said earlier, I, I felt there would be a cumulative power to the drama would, when you, you think about your own life, how it, there is this kind of build and it becomes a drama in our minds. So I never let them watch, no one ever saw footage until just recently they started watching the movies. Which I'm very grateful for. I <laughs> avoided being very self-conscious and it's very likely that I might have become self-conscious if I had been allowed to watch any of it yeah. growing up. I mean, it's, it was a lot to deal with watching it two months ago and very cathartic and emotional and I can't imagine how difficult it would have been at 10 years old. <laughs> it was really, really strange, really strange experience <laughs> to watch that. Um, honestly, quite painful at some times. <laughs> I mean, who wants to watch themselves go through all these awkward stages? I mean, it was, it was, it was hard. I was crying for, for a little while there. But, um, <laughs> Several hours of it, despair. It was, this is a unique Thing. I mean, I don't know if two actors have ever been in this position, mm. ever, in a narrative, you know, and Patricia and Ethan, but it's not as pronounced as young people growing up on camera in a narrative, so. You know, Ethan and I just got old. Yeah, <laughs> you just got old. <laughs> this whole thing was a leap of faith and a, a certain amount of optimism about the future, <laughs> just that we would be here 12 years from now, that, you know, <laughs> things would work out. So it was a, you know, it was a leap of faith on everyone's part. You know, it's against the law to even, you can't, contract someone to do anything over seven years and much less a kid if you think about it you know getting a six-year-old to agree to do something for 12 years it's, I mean that's technically illegal I think so. <laughs> I think also it was kind of a blessing that we got to see you know these, these kids growing up but they didn't have to get the brutal strange experience in their real life of having being actors young actors yeah, the because film then your friends yeah. get jealous and they get weird and they think you're you think you're so cool because you're in a movie and meanwhile these guys are making a movie but it's like oh really you're making a movie where's the movie you're making yes. <laughs> yeah, sure you're making a movie another movie okay but you don't have to deal with kind of what that triggers in everyone else which is very weird so yeah. they got to get the good part of creative part of it without the weird part of everyone else's crap the casting of the movie was, um, I had worked with Ethan Hawke before and I talked to him about it just as an idea. We were in New York and he, he agreed immediately to do it just because it sounded like so strange. He got this weird look on his face and really? said, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's, yeah, you know, Ethan jumped in. And then I was thinking about who could play his ex-wife, who's the mom, and I had met Patricia once before, I think in the 90s, mid-90s, um, talked to her for a little while then, but it was always a big fan, and I knew she had been a mom rather young in her life, and uh, I just called her up, and we talked for a couple hours, I think, mm -hmm. and so I never, Patricia was the only one I ever thought of, and I called her up and said, you know, what are you going to be doing 12 years from now, <laughs> you know? I, I said, well, 12 years now, I hope to be getting a film made. I, you'll probably be looking for a part. And, uh, <laughs> and here we are, you know. So she's very brave and, uh, you know, kind of fearless that way. And that was the quality I was looking for. So that's, you know, the casting element. And then Eller, of course, was a huge leap. You know, like I said, I, his parents seemed very supportive. They're both artists. And I thought that would be the familial support to get us through that was important, but he was just kind of an ethereal, thoughtful kid. I just liked talking to him, and he kind of grew up to be this really cool, thoughtful guy, so there were other ways to have gone. You know, if he would have grown up to be a 250-pound wrestler, the movie might have gone in that direction a little bit, but, but Lorelei um, 
was, you know, as my own daughter, at that age she was, seemed to be interested in it, but uh, that ebbed and flowed. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a daughter I'm close to, but Eller felt like my son that I never had, you know, so. Something I will say is someone asked Rick earlier it, what he learned about being a father from the film, and it made me realize that I think I learned a lot about being a son from working on this film. We sort of jumped into this all together, knowing our lives would go through a lot of changes. I mean, Patricia had a kid between the first and second. I got married uh, and divorced. Yeah. I, think. <laughs> I had two more children people during had this cancer, film. People buried parents. Ethan had um, two more kids. So, it, you know, our lives, a lot of this is a portrait of the kids growing up, but it's also adults kind of bumbling through parenthood. <laughs> and 